Good morning. This is Dara Halladier, and we are going to be starting our live Bible study here in just a minute. I'm trying to get set up and make sure that everybody can see me and that it's all good. Um, you will be able to comment while we're talking today, and I will get back with you as soon as I can um, as I see the comments coming in on our page. Um, thanks for coming, and let's start with a word of prayer. And we're going to start studying through the book of Proverbs with Living Beautifully. Father God, we come before you this morning and we thank you so much for all that you are. Father, for you are wisdom and in you we can find our being and our, our answers. Father, you are the answer. Thank you that you are sovereign over all and in control over all. Father, help us to bend to that and submit to that and to learn your ways. Father, for each person here today and um, maybe later on this afternoon or tomorrow, I just thank you for them and their families. Pray your blessings on them as they seek you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, a couple of technology things as we're going, and um, we will get, get started. I'm going to try and keep it to half an hour today. I've set my alarm, so when my alarm goes off, I will try to wrap it up. Um, I did want to let you know that we are using the New American Standard Bible. Um, if you have another version, that's fine, but um, what I will be teaching from will be the New American Standard. Um, also, um, the, the, the book cover itself, I get a lot of comments on. Where did I come up with that? I have a son who actually drew the cover, but I was praying about this Bible study and asked God, okay, God, what do I put on the cover? And he very clearly showed me a picture of a peacock. <laughs> and I said, a peacock? God, why a peacock? And so I began to research about peacocks. And you'll find on page um, 1x, which is at the beginning of 9 in the introduction, that the peacock is a symbol of integrity. Integrity and also the beauty that we can achieve when we endeavor to show our true colors. And I thought that was just perfect for a Bible study on wisdom because wisdom leads to integrity. And as we become wise and as God begins to transform our minds, he begins to transform our lives and um, that beauty will shine forth in him. So let's go ahead and start week one, day one. We're looking at wisdom, knowledge, and instruction. And God's word says this, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity. So we're gonna look at a couple of these words over this week, um, and then we will move on to the Bible study of David and Solomon, and then we'll begin to walk through the Proverbs. Um, this is my first time to do a live um, Facebook group, so I pray that the technology will work out and that it'll all work out fine. I will be watching for your comments as we go. Um, we started off with a story about my sister and how she was just petrified because she thought she was going to be busted, um, put into jail, when really she was just going to be put on a bus to go to school. I think we all have those stories of when we didn't understand a word. For me, that story was snakes. I knew that snakes were poisonous. Well, I was five years old and riding my bicycle and I ran over a snake out in the country and I was convinced that not only did my bike get poisoned, but because I was touching my bike, I too was poisoned. So I went to bed that night thinking I'm gonna die. And I was so relieved to wake up the next morning and realize I was okay. So some of you may have some of those stories as well. I'd love for you to put those in the comments section um, and, and I'll respond to some of those as well. But uh, if you have kids, we probably have had a misunderstanding of words. So we need to get on the same page when we're talking about the different things of God's word. So we're going to look at different words because any word has the capacity to bring to your mind a lot of different images based upon your own experiences or interactions with the subject. So when I say God, my perception of God is probably a little bit different than your perception of God, depending on how much you've been in the word and how much you've experienced this God of ours. He's an amazing God. He loves us and he wants us um, to have a relationship with him. So when you hear the word God, what is the image that those words, that word brings to your mind? Um, a lot of times it will depend upon your own father. If you had a judgmental father, uh, someone who is very strict, then you see God as someone judgmental and very strict. If you had a very grace-giving father, then you might see God as a grace-giving God. For me, I had to get into the Word of God and find out who this God was, and so I could replace the idea of what my earthly father was with who the Bible says my godly father, my heavenly father is. When I refer to God, then, I am going to be talking about the God of the Bible, 
the great creator God who created all things and is still in control of all things, our Savior, our Redeemer, the Spirit of Truth. And when we talk about fear of God as a Christian, we're not talking about the trembling fear, oh no, he's going to judge me, oh no, he's going to condemn me, but rather fear is in reverence and awe because we have such a, a God that is so caring and loving and compassionate towards his children. So when you think of wisdom, wisdom is our next word. When you think of wisdom, what do you think of? Is it being old? Is it being experienced? Is it people who think like I do, then they're wise? What makes someone wise? Again, feel free to comment. I'm not getting those comments um, live right now. I will try and have that figured out for next week, but um, I will definitely, um, be looking to do that. Um, so what, what do you think? Go ahead and write your comments down. What reminds you of wisdom? Is it Maybe it's the person that comes to mind. Well, the Heritage Dictionary of the English Language says wisdom is understanding what is true, what is right, and what is lasting. So then in your, your workbook, I ask what in your life is true? And again, if you'd like to comment, please do so. Um, for me, what is true is first of all, God's word. Uh, God's love. I've, had, I've struggled with that one, but I'm there. Um, my husband's love is very true to me and eternity and the promise we have. Um, in my life, what is right for me, my, my marriage, my kids, my grandkids, my life choices, because I've chosen to follow in the way of the Lord. I've not been perfect. Um, many times I've had back on my knees and, and asked God for forgiveness and direction. But when I'm walking in his path, I'm at peace and I know that that's right. What in your life is lasting? What will you be able to hold on to through this life or even through eternity? Again, we've got God's word, God's love, my husband's love, service, things that we do in obedience to God's calling, um, and people. People are eternal. So those are relationships with not only family, but with friends, with acquaintances, even somebody you may have only just touched one time. Those things are eternal. So we need to be careful what we're putting out there. Um, as Christians, we go one step farther than this, though. It's understanding what is true, right, and lasting according to God and his word, the Bible. So using biblical truths as a base, base for those judgments. So we're going to have a working definition of wisdom, and you will be asked to memorize this over the next several lessons. And that working definition is the ability to judge correctly and use our knowledge to avoid trouble solve problems, reach goals, and succeed in life based upon God's principles. So what? in order to have that wisdom, we need to know what God's principles are, and we're going to be talking about that as we go through this. So wisdom. Um, there are some verses that come with um, that have a lot to do with wisdom. It would be a great idea if you have some time on your own to do a word study on wisdom, and we're going to go over a few verses um, here in just a minute about that. But I want to bring in the next word, which is knowledge. What is knowledge? Which comes first, wisdom or knowledge? Well, of course, knowledge does. Knowledge is having the facts, whether that's um, just knowing the facts or experience, having experienced the facts. We can stand on the facts that are true because God himself is true. He is truth. So wisdom is the very personification of God. And we'll see that later on in scripture. Jesus is personification of wisdom. And that wisdom comes from God and from God alone. Um, so we need to know, have some knowledge. Knowledge comes first and then wisdom. So let's look at a couple of verses real quick. And if you have your Bibles available, um, Romans 12, 2 is one that many of you may have memorized. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the perfect will of God is. And that is so important because as we get into the word and we begin to think like God, because we've been so bathed in the word and we begin to say, this is my truth as well, because it is God's truth, then it begins to transform our thinking. And as it transforms our thinking, it will transform our actions. And so it's so important to have the knowledge of God's word because the Holy Spirit is alive. The Bible says he's active and sharper than any two-edged sword, the Bible, the word of God is. And that sword will begin to train us and teach us God's way and who God is 
and how we can relate to him. And that's so important because when our mind is transformed, our actions become transformed and we can walk in integrity and we can show the beauty that God has given us when those things happen. I want to look at Ephesians 3. I don't have all of these memorized, so I'm going to be flipping through my, my Bible along with you. Ephesians 3, and this is a little bit of a longer verse. I'm going to skip through it. Starting in verse 4, it's Paul is talking, and he says, My insight into the mystery of Christ, to be specific that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. And down in verse 9, he says, And to bring to light what is the administration of this mystery, which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. In other words, this wisdom, this hidden mystery um, is that all people are now available or able to come to God through Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed. And we can be part of the body of Christ and we can have the forgiveness of Jesus and be in a relationship with Jesus. And that's, that is the manifold wisdom of God that we can make known now, the, the great, that great mystery. Um, Colossians 3.16 goes on to say, let me get there for just a second here. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing another, one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So it says that, first of all, we need to let. Now, that's a choice. It means we have to make a choice to let, to allow. Not only will I read God's word, but I will allow it to, to dwell within me, to, to become my substance, to be all that I'm living for. And with that will come wisdom so that I can teach and admonish and encourage others with, with music and with um, thankfulness and with gratefulness to God. So wisdom leads to gratefulness. Wisdom leads to the ability to teach, to admonish, to encourage others. So that wisdom is so important. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1. And this is a longer passage. I'm not going to read it all. Um, but I suggest that sometime you go on your own and read these scriptures. It's going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 25. And I would encourage you to go to chapter 2, verse 16. We're not going to go through all of that right now. But it says, because the foolishness, the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And it goes on to say that um, we, being weak in our sin, in our human frailty, is actually the wisdom of God ourselves when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. When we put our lives in Him, we, the weak things of this world, become God's wisdom to be able to share with others those things. And it even says over in chapter 2, verse 16, we have the mind of Christ. How do we have that mind of Christ? Because we've read the letters that he's written to us. He's shown his personality. He's shown his characteristics. He's shown who he is in the word of God. And as we're in the word, we can know that wisdom as well. And then, of course, there's James 1. Uh, a lot of you can probably just quote this right, right off your um, top of your head, where it says in chapter 1, verse 5, But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So there are days, there are times, there are circumstances when I'm wringing my hands and I'm saying, God, I don't know what to do. What do I do? How do I do this, God? And all we have to do is ask him for his wisdom. And it says right here that he will give it to us generously. And so he will open our hearts. He will open our minds as we read the scriptures. The Holy Spirit will enlighten those words to show us to, how to apply it to our lives. And as we're in relationship with others as well. And he will generously give that to us as we seek those things. Romans 11 33. We've got a couple more verses here and then we'll move on with the Bible study, but I do want to touch on this. Romans eleven thirty three says, um, let me find it here. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable are his ways. Often in scripture, we'll see knowledge and wisdom tied together. 
because wisdom comes from having that knowledge of who God is, which comes from being in the Word of God and, and, and in relationship with God and praying to God and listening to God. So um, that's so depth, so deep. Um, it fills us up and it's enough. There's some other verses. If you're writing down verses, let me give you a couple more. I'm not going to take the time to read all of these. 1 Corinthians 1, 5 through 6. Ephesians 1, 17. I'm going to look at that one real quickly here. Ephesians 1, 17 says um, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. As we get to the knowledge of him, we get that spirit of wisdom and revelation um, given to us. Ephesians 4.13, maturity comes as we read God's word and wisdom is given. Philippians 1.9, through wisdom we can find love and we can be discerning. Colossians 1.9, Colossians 1.10, Colossians 2.2-3. 2 and then in 2 Peter, we find wisdom and knowledge in 1 Peter 1, 2 through 3. Uh, I'm sorry, 2 Peter 1, 2 through 3. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. And 2 Peter 3, 18. So I want to look at those for just a minute here over in 2 Peter. So go to Hebrews, James, and then you'll find second, first and 2 Peter. And the first one of those is chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. And it says this. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start at... That's the first, I was like, that's not it. Okay, here we go. Um, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Let's stop right there. When we have knowledge, what does that bring us? It brings grace and it brings peace. Seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Well, let's just make a list. What do we get when we find God and we get the knowledge of God? We get the grace. We get the peace. We're granted everything pertaining to life and godliness. The ability to walk in the, in the spirit and to handle the things of this life. As we go back to our definition, wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and use that knowledge, the knowledge of who God is. And what he, how he thinks and what he would have us to do. And in that, we can avoid problems. We can uh, avoid trouble, solve problems, reach goals, and we can succeed in life based upon God's principles. That's important. That's exciting. That is exciting because we can overcome the things of this world. I look at people's lives and I see so much death and destruction and devastation from wrong choices. And as we begin to know God, we can begin to make those right choices. All right, I'm going to move on to our next word. Our next word, um, if you're following along in the book, I'm on the top of page three. That word is instruction. So where does instruction fall with wisdom and knowledge? Instruction falls right there in the middle. Instruction comes after we have the knowledge. Then we have to be instructed in it in order to have wisdom. So what is that instruction? Proverbs 4.13 says, Take hold of instruction. Let her not go. Guard her, for she is your life. So not having knowledge, knowing the facts isn't enough. We have to take that, be instructed in it, and then act it out in wisdom. When I came to know the Lord, I was 13 years old. I came from a very chaotic family, as I've shared with some of you before. And my sister had come home um, drunk and passed out in the front bushes. And I had ridden with my parents, with her, to the hospital to have her stomach pumped. And she began to speak out of her, um, the deepest part of her, the heart hurt um, of her heart. And I learned things about my family I had not known, um, about a divorce and about some other things. And so the next day I made an appointment with my pastor. And I went down, I said, what can I do to help my sister? And the pastor looked at me and he said, well, first of all, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And I said, well, I love Jesus and I read my Bible. <laughs> That's all I knew. <laughs> I'd been going to church. I took my, walked myself down to the nearest church. Um, it was, God was good and it was a Bible-believing, faithful church. And uh, so that's all I knew. So he, he gave me the chair um, example. I don't know if all of you have heard of it, but he showed me a chair on the other side. He pointed to a chair on the other side of the room and he said, do you believe that that chair will hold you? if you go and sit in it. 
And I said, of course. He says, okay, you have knowledge. You have the knowledge that that chair would hold you, but are you presently actively experiencing that knowledge by standing over here on the room and the chair being on the other side of the room? Of course not, I wasn't. He said, what would you have to do? Well, I'd have to go and sit in the chair. So he instructed me to go and sit in the chair. And he said in the same way, we can have all the knowledge of God. We can have all the Bible verses memorized. We can know what God wants, but until we go and sit with him, as we sit with him and learn from him, and we learn how to judge correctly, and we learn how to solve problems and avoid troubles and all those things, when we're sitting with him and in him through the Holy Spirit um, as believers of Jesus Christ. So if you haven't asked Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you know have the knowledge in your head, but you haven't experienced his love, his forgiveness, his grace, his mercy, um, his kindness, then I ask right now today that you would be willing to just ask God, just say, God, I'm, I'm a sinner, I've messed up. Um, I confess that before you and I want to do it your way now. And then God will begin to instruct us. Instruction is knowledge gained from someone who has more knowledge. And the word of God is knowledge. He is knowledge. Um, so instruction is putting information in order, preparing it, teaching it, arranging it, and building up the information so it can be used. Um, my husband said it's like this with, when we were raising our kids. He said, you know, the facts is like putting a big coat rack on the wall. Those are the facts. And then as they grow and we instruct them, it's like taking coats and hanging them on that coat rack, giving them instruction. Wisdom comes when they know which coat to take off for which circumstance. Hopefully they're not going to grab a baseball cap and a, a cape when it's raining outside. They need the raincoat. Um, so wisdom comes with that. So that's an, a way to think of it. So how can we be instructed? We can be instructed, first of all, through by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes God just gives us that conscious um, thought of, wait a minute, there's, there's something's not right, that discerning ability, or he'll even give us words sometimes or pictures um, if, if that's needed. He also enlightens us through God's word. When we're reading God's word, the Holy Spirit can bring uh, teaching to the depths of our hearts. So we get instruction through the word of God by the Holy Spirit, by reading, by listening to sermons, by reading autobiographies of godly Christian people, by talking to more mature Christians and asking questions and being in fellowship with others, we can get that instruction. You know, I used to think that I could give my kids knowledge and expect them to act wisely. <laughs> but of course, if you ever had a five, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 year old, you know that that's not always true. Even if you have an 18 year old sometimes, they may know the facts, but they're, they're just impulsive and they act. Um, so that instruction phase is so important. We call it discipleship. It's, it's having someone else teach us through the word of God um, as we're doing today. So we've got these three words, wisdom, knowledge, and instruction. So in the, in the book on page three, you have an opportunity to write down what those definitions are. So wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and to use our knowledge to avoid trouble, solve problems, reach goals, and succeed in life based upon God's word. Facts, a uh, knowledge is facts, both um, just head knowledge as well as experiential knowledge. Knowing God loves me is different than having experienced God's love, but that's knowledge. Instruction is putting that information in order, preparing it, teaching it, arranging it, and building up the information so it can be utilized, so it can be used in our lives. So begin uh, memorizing that definition of wisdom. All right, again, I, I apologize. I had hoped to be able to um, watch this and comment as we go. It's not coming up um, on my Facebook page right now. So um, I will look at the comments later and make sure I respond to those afterwards. At the questions to think about, some things here. What, so after you've, you've listened to what we've said today, what is the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Again, knowledge is just having the facts where wisdom is putting those facts to use in any given situation. And when we don't have that wisdom, when we don't know what to do, we can go to God's word. And he says he'll give it to us generously. We can go to him in prayer and he can share something with us through our conscious or through our thoughts um, in that. Number two, how about you? Are you making wise decisions? <laughs> Does
this is where we're stepping on toes here. Are you making wise decisions in your time? How you're spending your time at your work? Are you influencing others for good or for bad? Um, Deja is one of our, our group members here and she says, wisdom is heart knowledge. And that's so true. Wisdom is heart knowledge, not just head knowledge. And, and the longest distance in the world is the 18 inches between your head and your heart, between your head and your heart. Um, it's easy to get it in here. It's harder to get it here. And that comes from that experience, from being there and working through it and talking to God and being in a relationship with him and other people. And then it, it does get down to that heart. Um, and we have to ask God for that. And he does that. Are you making wise decisions in your friendships? Are you needing to put boundaries maybe on some friendships? Or are you needing to reach out and include others that um, maybe don't have what you have? So that would be a, 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 another place we could sh um, use our wisdom. What about in family relationships? Sometimes family relationships are the hardest. Are you being wise in your family relationships? And that, that includes forgiveness. It includes for, um, loving others. It includes looking past those things. But it also means protecting yourself sometimes. So in family relations, what is your, are you using wisdom? How is your working definition of wisdom different than the world's view of wisdom? And this says, see Corinthians 1, 18 through 2, 16. That's a long passage. It's one of them that I gave you just a little bit ago. But again, it's the one that says, um, let me get there. 1 Corinthians um, 1, 18. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased to the foolishness of the message preached to save those who do believe. In other words, man in his greatest wisdom was unable to reach God. We all fall short of the glory of God and we could not reach him on our own. We could not be perfect. We could not be holy on our own. We all face condemnation and death. Um, the wages of sin is death. But through the weakness of our, ourselves as we come and we humbly lay ourselves at the cross before Jesus Christ, um, what the world looks at is foolishness. Um, the, fa the cross was a terrible thing. It was the ex executioner's um, material they used to, to kill millions of people, thousands of people um, in the old times. It was very painful, and yet we glorify it. Why do we glorify such a gruesome thing? Because it brought us salvation. It brought us to God. And the world looks at us as, oh my gosh, that's foolish. That's silly. That's crazy. And yet, God's wisdom brought us to him. And he is the embodiment of wisdom. Um, so how is our wisdom different from the world's wisdom? The world's wisdom says, get all you can get. Take what you can take. You're number one. Make yourself pleasure. Give yourself pleasure. The pleasures of this world is what's important. And God's word says, no, come to me. And I will carry your heavy burdens. And I will bring you peace. What are the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. All those things are ours through Jesus Christ. The world looks at us as if we're foolish, as if we're needing a crutch, as if um, we're believing in fables, as if the Bible is no longer true. But truth does not change and because God does not change. And so that is the difference between the world's wisdom and our wisdom. And right now, our world's wisdom often says tolerance is the, the main thing. And we're saying, no, the word of God. He is the only way to God, Jesus Christ. So what knowledge is biblical wisdom based upon? If I say I need this biblical wisdom, what knowledge do I need to have? Well, I need to have the knowledge of that's found in God's word. I need to have the knowledge of God as creator. I need to have the knowledge of his great love. A lot of people say the Old Testament, I was checking my time so I don't run over here, that the Old Testament, God was, was a horrible, angry God. But the truth is, if you read the Old Testament, he was a long-suffering, compassionate gracious God time after time after time until he had to do something different and then he sent his son.
And the knowledge of what God did through Jesus Christ is the personification of wisdom. It is the uh, epitome of wisdom. It's the apex of wisdom. It is that Jesus is the Son of God. He came, he lived a perfect life, and he loved us. And um, in that, he saved us and gave us an opportunity to have that relationship with God. So are you spending time studying the Bible to gain the knowledge of God? It's something we should do every day, all day long. Billy Graham never put his Bible down, hardly. He carried it with him all day long. And look what God did with him. So study your Bible. Know who this God is. If you think that he's a, an angry God, a judgmental God, only an unconditional loving God, if, if you think you have to work in order to get his pleasure, read God's word and it'll bring you so much grace and peace and freedom. All right. That wraps us up today. Thursday, we will be looking at lessons two and three. Three is a little pop quiz, so it won't take very long. So go ahead and look at lessons two and three for Thursday. And we will be talking about discernment, prudence today and um, watching this. And I will be going on and looking at your comments and reacting to that um, until I see you on Thursday at nine o'clock. Thank you all so much and have a blessed day.